Sometimes, it's the journey that gets you there that ends up defining the final product. So, this is what's known as a steel tiger. It's for doing up steel tires, not for shooting, not for anything like that. So please don't demonetize me. Pew, 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 pew. These are one of the most communal tools you will ever find. If someone's got one, it's free reign to borrow it, use it. You know, whoever's got a good one with the sharpest teeth, it's getting used. Trouble is, is when you've got a good one, everybody wants it, and it's hard to get it back. People write the names on them, colour them in, do a lot. At the end of the day, they all look the same and they all get mixed up and you just can't tell whose is whose. So one day I had the bright idea that because they're made out of aluminium and they cast aluminium, I'll go ahead and I'll try my luck at anodizing. Something I always wanted to do since I was a kid buying fancy aluminium parts for my BMX. And at the time, it's something I figured would just be for, you know, probably cheapness, economy of scale, whatever reason. They were two pack painted, so I just stripped that off. This is called foreshadowing. Since this is my first time having to go anodizing at all, I decided to go with Caswell's Deep Red. I went with Caswell because it's tried and tested. I would like to test other dyes later, but for now, I'm going with something that we know works. The next thing I needed to grab was some lead. Now, lead's something that's quite easy to come by until you want it, and then it's hard to come by. I ended up buying a roll lead. It costs a little bit of money, but there is way cheaper ways of getting it. I mean, you could just walk around the beach picking up sinkers until you've got enough to melt down to make your own plates, but I didn't have time. I ended up buying it, but there's all sorts of ways to get lead. You don't have to spend a lot of money. So the next step is to give the pieces a really good clean. Once you've got them down to bare aluminium, you just start cleaning them. I use the Ajax powder stuff. Uh, I'll show a little photo of it here. And then I just get to scrubbing. I use gloves for this stage to not protect me from it but to protect it from me so I don't get my dirty hand oils all on it. And once I've given it a really good scrub with this, I end up throwing it through a session in the ultrasonic cleaner. This isn't necessarily all needed to achieve a good result, but the better you take each step and the more effort you put in, the more likely you are to get consistently good results. So I just clean the living hell out of it. The next step is I give it an acid bath this will get rid of any oils from fingers and whatnot, as well as etch the outside surface. So if you are putting in an acid bath, you will get a matte finish. You will never get a shiny gloss finish, but you can see straight away the bubbles start working. This is eating the metal. This is, if you left it in here for a prolonged amount of time, it would just disappear. So the caustic soda I use for this is just branded as caustic soda. It's made by Bondo but there's a lot of different caustic sodas on the market. Um, this is the one I use up on the screen. But this leads on to the first dangerous chemical we're using, really. So if you are gonna touch any of this, do some research, um, read the MSDS, and please take as many safety precautions as you can. If you don't know what you're doing, don't touch it. Don't be like me, don't be a goose. So after each step, when I pull it out of something, I give it a full rinse. I've got a spray bottle of distilled water that I keep handy, and I use this to rinse off everything between every step, whether it goes from the soap washing step to the acid etching step, to actually putting it in the acid for the doing the electrolysis, to taking it out of that acid, in the dye, out of the dye. Every single step, I rinse it with distilled water. So throughout this thing, you'll see a lot of wet table. That's the distilled water I've been spraying everywhere. And now a quick shout out to Safe Styles, who, for this video, kept all the acid out of my eyes. If you want some Australian certified safety glasses and don't want to look like a speed dealer, these are your only option. There's a link below if you want to check them out yourself. And currently I have a 10% discount. So don't be afraid to support them like they support me. Everywhere. So this is the bath setup you can see. This is in a solution of sodium bisulfate. Now this isn't the normal chemical you use, but where I am to buy the battery acid, you've got a couple of options. You can either buy a brand new motorcycle battery with no acid in it and you get a little bottle of acid with it, or you can buy a thousand litre IBC of it, 
or you can phone around and annoy a lot of people and just get told the same answer and you do enough Google searches and you're bound to get a knock on your door. To be fair, this stuff's strong enough for what we're doing here. We can get just as good results. I think it all comes down to preparation more so than the actual chemical you're using. They're pretty much the same thing. So again, when it's working, it starts bubbling. Notice that my parts aren't touching them each other and they're not touching the lead either. And yeah, as soon as you crank on the power, you can see it happening, bubbles away. I'm using aluminium TIG rods in the solution there and they run up to this little aluminium buzz bar that I made. I got the idea off this from another guy. Uh, if I can think of him, I'll try and put the link in for him, give him a shout out. He's got a really, really good setup and in-depth video. But this works well for me. I've got a couple of cheap pegs just to hold it in place. So after she's been ticking along for a while, you start to see a bit of stagnant. I leave it in for about 45 minutes as a minimum but you can do the calculations to work out exactly how long for. So after that, it's time to put it in the dye. I like to preheat my dye, get it right up to perfect temperature, otherwise it takes too long in the dye to actually be absorbed. Currently I'm using two fish tank uh, heaters in here, just double, keep it get, help it get hot. I've just got them maxed out. I just sit under the recommended temperature, but it's a lot warmer than the ambient temperature, so it does work a lot better. And again, it's just a matter of rinse, 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 and then dropping the dye. You should be able to pull it out and see whether it's working uh, straight away. You can you get a look. Uh, the dye can be a lot quite deceiving. When you first pull it out, it looks a way darker and a way better result than it is. And it's not until you actually give it the rinse test that you'll see whether it's worked. And this is when you'll it's at this moment in time you start to see how good or how much of a fail this whole thing was. So over the course of a few months, I had a few goes at this and every single time was a fail. And every single time I'd go back, start again and say, what am I messing up? Where have I stuffed up? Started off, I decided the power supply was no good. So I got a new power supply with a direct current like stays and maintains. I left it in for longer. Um, a better electrical connection. I upped the acid content. I went through my prep stages harder and harder. I scrubbed it, I sanded it, I did everything a thousand times. And my results improved, but I could never get rid of the dark, tingy, dull greyness of the thing. And it, towards the end there, the best results, I was now going, I was so meticulous. And the best results I got were still just a dark, weird, you could tell the dial was sinking in, but it wasn't sinking in quite well. But one of the main giveaways, one of the biggest giveaways, was the rods themselves. They were anodizing brilliantly. I mean, the first couple of times I went at it, I didn't put them in long enough, didn't etch them long enough or whatever. But I was now getting these, they were coming out perfectly red great red like stuff i'd have results with so my trial and error fault finding has got me to this point where i'm starting to blame the item itself so i decided to cut off a little bit of this aluminium bar and just see how it goes in comparison and i gave it a quick run through i didn't give it a long time but i just want to see whether the dye was going to adhere or not and i also tried giving the two parts a very very long bath so here are my results. As you can see, the very, very long bath gave me extremely red results on the wire itself. I got decent results on the tube. If I'd left them in there for longer or did a better etch, I would have got longer. And this just led me to believe I'm on the right path, but there's something else going on. So, so I do a little bit of research and this aluminium probably isn't pure enough for what I'm trying to do. It's probably got zinc or magnesium or something, you know, to help with the intricacies of the mold that they're trying to cast in. And it probably help with the overall strength and durability, flexibility, whatever it is, people add stuff. They don't just use pure metals, they add stuff. Which means a lot of my plans on anodizing precast things are just thrown out the window. 
but I decided I'll get a pretty good dark patchy red. Let's not throw this all away. I mean, I've come this far. I want to get a result. So I jumped online, went back to Caswell, ordered some black dye, and decided let's have a go at making it black. You're going to have to go ahead and pretend this is black dye for me because I've only got the green dye footage. I also ordered these bigger water heaters, but as soon as I turn it in and plug it on, it sounds like it's insta-boiling, almost like it's just a 240-volt coil straight in there, no resistance, no nothing, just just heating it up and you can hear that hiss, it do just doesn't sound right. So for the last six months, I've dedicated one day a month at least to having a go at this and I must have gone through this process with these specific parts maybe 10 to 15 times maybe even you know running through different scenarios different amounts of time different amounts of current everything and I've just done it again I've gone through the whole lot meticulously scrubbed it clean of everything etched it for the just the right amount of time you know, in between everything, just giving it an absolute rinse. And the results with the black are looking very, very promising. So I threw it in the pot to cure it. And it's been bubbling away now for a while. And let's just say, I'm pretty happy with the results. So, needless to say, it's probably not as dark as I would hope for, but knowing that I'm not working with the perfect material, I am very happy with what I pulled off. I think I dug myself down a hole and a path that there was no coming back from, and the black really just managed to impregnate it. And it almost looks like a gunmetal look now. So, all in all, best out of a shitty situation. Um, I'm having a lot of fun with anodizing. I've finally got some good results on the initial piece. As you can see with the green, the black, and the red, I get really good results on the pure TIG wire. So the results are there. They can be achieved with this setup. It's just more practice and more having to go. If uh, this video is popular, I'll make more along these lines. Cheers for watching. So if you made it this far in the video, you've made it all the way to the end, and I genuinely thank you for watching. But while I do have you here, if you are interested, I do sell stickers, so you can check them out. The link is in the description below, and no pressure, but it's just a small little thing. All the money goes to make more, and just keep this little thing going.